you look at that? It's the old Pittsburgh Steelers football stadium. Yeah, that's right. We're in Pittsburgh, or should I say Schittsburg? Man, some of these fucking roads are on here. Left three lanes. Horrible. Horrible. But, uh, yeah, I'm grabbing a little yellow trailer in the morning. 7 a.m. I can get it. It is uh, 119 right now. And actually, actually, to be honest with you, I can even, uh, I'm going to be parking at a Speedway truck stop like five minutes down the road from the place. So that's awesome. So catch up with you in the morning. Just figured I'd pull you out real quick show you that shit hole. On the show, on the Chad Deegan YouTube channel. You know. Drop that trailer off in a mud hole. I place a fucking straight shit hole. Hey. Yeah, hollering at me. We saw it like my truck, man. See the uh, baseball stadium over there and uh, some buildings. Mm, somebody smells like a smoke of weed. All right, I'm out of here. Well, I'm back at the house, and uh, obviously you can see out there, it's a pressure washer. Just got done uh, wet sanding and uh, pressure washing Frank. Now let's go inside because I've got uh, got a package on the table here. And uh, early birthday present, if you will, Kim got that for me. Oh, not those right there, but let's move this over here. Kim must be doing laundry or something. She's... Uh, hanging out so let's forgot those over on the thing let's get this open and uh we'll check out what it is here oh, wait a minute that's for your birthday i i understand it's from a birthday but it's an early birthday present oh, is because it? i don't know if i agreed to being an early we need birthday. it now we need it now though because okay. we need to do the work right. now so okay. okay all right she's okay with op us opening it well it was either she buy it for me for my birthday or I buy it for myself and she decided to uh, buy it for my birthday because she asked me, are you going to buy it anyways? And I said, yes. So let's get this thing open here and uh, we'll check it out. Oh, look at all that stuff. Look at all that stuff right there. Look at all that paint. So there's my green, easy flow, lime green. There's some purple. Nice silver, white, blue. Some brushes. Uh, tape, which I probably don't need. Some mixers. 
and a bunch of little cups. I don't know what's in the box though. Let me see if I can get it out. I'm not sure what is in that box. Metal something is what it says. Sorry, I need to get this knife again. because you always could use an extra paint can opener oh this is the little the little box i bet that's your little storage box i think it yeah, let's get, this. get out of there oh this, this does not want to come out here we go oh nice it's a little real box kind of type deal wonder is any cleaner with this store your old stuff in there so that's cool this was a custom shop automotive quality since 1974 purchase off of Amazon there now I can put all my stuff in there and I can take that with me because I don't plan on doing everything that I want to do to it right now. I just plan on going out and probably doing uh, just the spots where I need for uh, actually the whole thing. But I mean, anything else like lettering or anything like that I want to put on or anything, I can do that later. Oh, my stent there in the corner. But whatever, it's whatever. Let's see, we got some striping reducer, slow reducer. That is going to have to not go in there because it won't fit. But uh, the white, it'll fit. Black, we'll be using some of that. Red, won't be using any hot rod red. Won't be using any flash yellow. Competition orange, probably not that maybe cool gray probably not silver alloy i doubt it since we've got metallic ultra deep purple yes lime green yes mm, process blue maybe okay now we got some brush oil preserving so we'll put that down in there put our cups in there I'm not sure why we got a paint can opener. We'll put our cups in there. And uh, we'll throw our pinstriping in there if it'll fit. Yes, it'll fit. Where did I put the brushes? Did I put the brushes in there? I must have. I don't know. Maybe I'll... Oh, there they are. Right here. Uh, I think maybe Josie's coming over, so we'll be back, folks. Well, I'm out in the garage here. I got me a little setup going on, and um, just uh, gonna practice a little bit because I don't want to mess this up. Uh, what I'm doing here, I've never done this before. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this with um, a vehicle. I mean, I've painted oil painting, acrylic, um, you know, on canvas, but nothing to this magnitude. So I got this little panel set up this was an original panel from frank that was on there that i had taken off it had a bunch of uh letters and stuff on it it just wasn't needed to be on the truck so i took it off and i sprayed some different things when i was testing out different uh spray cans and ideas on things to do the truck so i figured i'll practice on this and it's basically standing up so that'll be fine so i've got some oil in here in this cup and i was i just put this in here to clean it and get it all greased up and ready that way it would uh you know do what i wanted it to and knife up if you will i'm gonna wipe this off and clean off this brush and get everything out i've got some uh the medium reducer right here 
in this little cup, which I'll dip the brush in once I get some paint on. I have a little palette down here, which you can't see, unfortunately. But um, right down here is where I'm going to be mixing the paint up at to make sure. And then I've got some lacquer thinner to clean the brush afterwards. So I've been watching some stuff on uh, the channel about this. And I've seen different types. So I'm going to first, I'm just going to put some on here. And then I'm going to mix some of the reducer into it to break down the paint and uh put it on and see how it goes i i know i'm gonna need some hardener so that's one thing i'm gonna have to run to the store and get some hardener for this it is uh striping and lettering enamel but i want some hardener that way if i ever want to clear over it or it's going to be on the chalk i don't want it just plopping off because it's gooey or anything like that so i'll have to do that but let's put some paint down here real quick That's probably plenty. I need to practice this before I just go off and do it because I don't, um, it doesn't feel too bad. I don't want to mess it up. You know, and I'll make sure that when I do it, it's good enough to where I don't have to worry about taking anything off since I've never done this before. I mean, it's going to be a challenge, but... That'll go thin that paint up a little bit. I don't want to make it too thin though. I got to get it to where it's perfect because I need this to um, not just stop when I'm going. So. Looks like it's starting to drag some. I don't know, I think that brush is pretty much good. Right, let's try this real quick and see what happens. I'm just gonna go straight down and see what happens here. See how long I can go. Without going crooked. Well, I do like the fact that that'll run and that'll uh, that'll go long. That definitely wasn't straight, but um, that's okay. I will keep I will keep practicing. The reason why I have this panel stand up is because I'm gonna be standing basically on the truck and uh, doing this, but then I'm gonna have to go with curves too. So. I gotta twist that. I gotta twist that. I'm gonna have. Yeah. You know, I don't know, but that's uh. Oh shoot! I put oil in there. S O B. Let's see if I can get that broke back down. Definitely gonna need some practice, folks, because I gotta be able to twist that to be able to get it to go round without Tom. Um, which I'm glad I have this. I've got to twist that brush in my fingers to be able to get that to turn without, um, spilling over, that's too thin. It's all trial and error, so I definitely have to be focused and lasered in. I kind of like that shaky, that shaky look. There's no way I'm making it around that too without messing that up. Okay, there you go. Something like that. That's um, not easy at all. You don't, you don't, I can't even. The paint's starting to get thin. I, I would need more, obviously, but 
Let's go. Let's go try to do another straight line. Definitely can't do anything straight right now. Could feel the cup down here so it started to get a little crazy but that's not too bad so I'm definitely gonna need to um, do some practicing but I've got to get my it's all about pressure on the brush they say Definitely not straight. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll need some hardener too because I don't see this. Um, I guess I'll have to see how it dries up. Let's get, see if we can get crazy and get uh, uncomfortable here. I mean, where's that D? Let's see if I can get that D. Stopping and starting and matching up, too, is also going to be a problem. That's too hard. I can't twist that yet in my fingers. Way too hard to do. Okay, so that's not too bad. Huh. Okay, so we'll just keep uh, keep practicing. Um, it's nice that I do have letters in different curves and stuff like that to uh, work with. Because I'm definitely going to have some problems when I... If I try to go up around a curve or something like that, let me see if I can do it just with one hand. I doubt it. Let me do this right here. Yeah, I definitely can't do it with one hand. No, going too fast. Definitely not straight. No, yeah, that's too hard to do. Let me see if I can. Because you got to keep the brush completely level with that ant the whole time you go around. They say go to slow. Definitely not. I could always turn it like that, but you can see the paint fading out. Yeah, you just put a little bit of reducer with that paint. That man, that makes it to where it um it runs a long time. That's nice. I didn't use a ton of paint here either, so. I mean, obviously, you can see in that G, it's not very good, but some of the stuff that's darker, the fresher stuff, it um, it isn't too bad. So, now I don't necessarily think I'm going to be doing a bunch of this. I'm going to just be like, hopefully, I don't know. Let's do a line like this because let's go like this, and we'll see how this looks, how steady I can get this because I'm going to have to do stuff like this. Ooh, getting a little crooked there towards the end, but yeah, that's not bad. 
that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna have to be doing on the truck so I should be okay I mean there may be some you know unfortunately some muck-ups but it's definitely not gonna be perfect Absolutely not. But we're being creative and we're having fun, so... Yeah, I should be okay to do this, I would say. The way he breaks like that, so we definitely have to slow down. Or get that brush loaded up more. I think it's too thin the paint may be done. Cause that the way that's thinning out and stuff. That's not too bad, that's pretty crisp. Okay, got a little deeper there. Now I thought about doing different things because what I could do is webs and stuff. Oh, they were getting a little crooked. We, it's all about the pressure though. So I got thicker and then it went back to thinner. So See that hair dragon. Yeah, the brush and all that stuff. You can see all that. All right, well, I'm going to clean this up and, um, and we'll come back another time and, and do it. Oh, yeah, look at all the paint that's on that. Let me drag that off. Nice. So, I guess pinstriping for dummies is what I need to look up. I think I'm I'm okay with what I'm doing. I guess we'll find out when um another time. Good morning, folks, and today is the day to do some pinstriping. Sunday church service. I'm probably going to be using this brush right here I'm going to um, test it out I already tested out a, another brush right here the other day um, I'll show some clips of that it was uh, a little shaky but um, today this morning I'm a little better off I only had two cups of coffee and I switched to decaf so I don't um, won't be too shaky doing this or nervous hopefully not uh, I already prepped this down with Windex and stuff everything is ready to go uh, came out and wiped her down earlier because it was extremely wet from the dew and stuff so I chamois the truck off let it dry for a little bit and then I just ran Windex over the lines that I'm going to be using I don't have to worry about taping anything off because I'm just going to freehand this uh, these spots right here hopefully will go away because I'll do black a black stripe and then uh, probably cover it up but like this side will be easier because it didn't have that paint chip off when I peeled off the tape so that's what's going on and then I'll uh, freehand everything because I don't want to use tape I could use tape and, and keep everything crisp and then I'd have to peel it off and retape it peel it off and retape and I just don't want to do that so should be good to go on this I need to um, <clears throat> get my paint mixed up over here so that's what I'll be doing next 
couldn't do anything the other day because I didn't have any hardener and hardener will give it extra gloss um, if you can see on some of these right here like I can take my finger and swipe on that and that dulls that up that hardener should help keep that shiny plus I'll um, be able to clear over it if I want to so I got some oil here from a brush I'll clean that I'll put oil on the brush clean it and then use some thinner and clean it out maybe a little bit of slow reducer just to keep the paint from um, tacking up on me once I put it in here and then palette it on this and then uh, the hardener also helps as a reducer also so I'll be able to do that but I'm gonna use the Cushman I thought the other day I was out here looking around and I thought I'll use the Cushman to be able to stand on the bed because I'll be able to cover a lot more ground or the roof for some of the top spots that way when I do that uh, it'll be a lot easier than using that ladder and I should have thought about using the Cushman before when I was painting because I could have you know covered a lot more area and I can see that metallic popping out right now in the Sun I don't know if you can or not probably not from the uh, camera but yeah everything's been wet sanded on the truck the whole truck I wet sanded the other day I still I there's still a few spots of flake that's sticking out that I could go over again but um, I'll save that for another day because I want to kind of get this done and wrapped up that way it's um you know do what I need to that way I can start putting the truck back together because there's no way I'm gonna be able to do lines uh, for pinstriping with a ladder right here or you know a bar up there I don't want to have to worry about going around things and that's why I kind of held off from putting the truck back together not to mention I um, just ordered some new windshield wiper arms and a horn and I want to get the glass done before in the seals all taken care of before I put those back on that way that's easier to do and I don't have to worry about bunging those down or anything but yeah it should be a pretty decent um, day to do this it's probably 70 something right now and only gonna get warmer there's no wind so that's always nice too um, so yeah that's where we're at right now on the truck just getting ready to do that let's go back in here and I'm gonna get some paint out and start mixing up and play with that brush on this panel this is an old panel that was on Frank this is I kind of messed around the other day with it just to feel the paint out get the paint smooth get my hand going with the brush and stuff like that you know uh, try to do some circles some letters uh, number down here I just free handed a little bit of spider webs and stuff like that so and I just wanted to see how the paint would flow and how long of a line I could get like this was one of my first lines that I did uh, was right here up against here and it flowed really well and then I drug that whole line out and the paint didn't run or anything like that and it didn't um, streak out on me or thin out so that was nice uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this I did do um, by hand the uh, blue chucks letters and stuff like that from um, my DOT and stuff like that but it was not this kind of paint it was uh, just used some testers with some alcohol mix and um, it went on kind of thick and hard but this will be better and I, I like to try new things and learning stuff so you know this is something that I could take on the road with me I could take this kid on the road with me and if I'm down or something like that or I'm at a truck show and I want to do something I can do something you know if I'm bored which usually I never am but I got a whole kit right here which you've seen the other day so you know should be a good time so let's get into it here so I've got some paint down here and uh, I'll dip it in a cup a little bit here and get some more on here and this is what you do you just palette it up like this and you get it all nice on your brush and I like the thickness of this brush I just laid this line right here um, you know like how shiny that is maybe there's a little bit too much paint on there I don't know it looks like it could start to run right there but I don't believe it is so I'm going to stick the camera right here and I'm going to try and do another line. I don't want to um, hold you while I do this because I do need to kind of use both hands. But let me just move this brush around. I'm just trying to get the paint to where I feel comfortable with it. That way I don't, um, you know, mess anything up. And then I uh, <clears throat> definitely don't want to mess anything up. But I got to get the shakiness out too because I am shaking a little bit. But... We're just gonna dab right here like this on here on this tip and now that I'm on camera I seem to be shaking a little bit more but it's, uh, I 
didn't do too bad. It's a little bit thicker than what I'd like, but I do like the consistency and flow of this. So yeah, there's some old tape right there, but yeah, that doesn't flow too bad. Um, and the paint seems to be staying nice and thick and not uh, streaking or running or anything like that. It's just, I gotta be comfortable with this, you know what I mean? Because you definitely, you gotta touch the stuff and then you gotta kind of brace yourself too and you can see how shaky I am here, so I may have to uh, run around the block or something to cool down. Now this panel has a little bit of drag to it and shakes, which the truck's not going to because it's gonna be more solid. This isn't as solid, so. Okay, they're starting to run out on me a little bit, but I would make sure that brush was loaded up a lot more. So I guess it's time to go out and try. And I could also throw a little bit of reducer in there if I wanted, but I do like the consistency and thickness of that. So I think this is what we'll go with. I just got to make sure that my paint doesn't harden up on me or anything like that when I'm out there. And uh, when I need to mix, I did a like five to one mix. So... A, somebody said four to one I did five to one just to see but yeah this is starting to get a little bit thick down here on this where I've got it palleted so if I would want to use some reducer I could but uh, from what I was told this hardener is enough reducer that where you should I should be able to keep that paint in that cup for a half hour before it starts to dry up so I should be able to do plenty of stuff if you know what I mean bad so I guess um we'll go out to the truck here and we'll start doing some stuff because uh, I don't think that's going to be too bad I just got to get my jitters out so I'll be back
let's go look at this. I definitely didn't think this was going to be easy, and by no means is it. Um, when I was getting over here to do this, the paint was about to, towards the end, and it was starting to thicken up on me. And that line goes like this crooked, so we'll have to uh, fix that, straighten that out. That one didn't do too bad. It's extremely hard around here to get that brush up in there. So, I mean, this is by no means easy at all. Um, yeah, it's a mess. It's uh, extremely hard. So, I eventually, sometime I may use tape um, just to crisp stuff up. Or I've got those little detail brushes too, which I could use. Um, I guess my thing is, is when I'm moving down at the angles and stuff like that, obviously you could see from the beginning I'm a little crooked there but that's fine nothing's going to be perfect so it is what it is but uh the thickness getting the thickness of that brush down is um one thing too in making sure i got enough paint like i don't know what was going on up here this was extremely hard so i'll have to sex that up but you could you could see where i'd go back and sex things up uh, a little thick on this line versus that one but that's okay because i can cover it with other paint if i want to i uh, came over here and did this door you can see where i would stop and start again and that was um that's not easy that is not easy to get around here and stuff and that one looks like it might be going a little crooked too but that's okay um it will be cool once it's completely done hopefully i can straighten things up and sex them up a little bit but I don't mind the way that looks right now. I think that looks kind of cool. With that design on there. So, and I could add some stuff down here. I'll probably end up doing like um, right in here this line and then have it go up and shoot up like right around here to cover this crap up. But yeah, that's uh, that's the gist of it. Um, I'll have to, uh, I'm gonna let that sit up for a little bit and see how it goes. Take me a little break. Um, Maybe get some chewing gum that way I can chew gum and focus on that versus uh, messing things up and squiggling shit. But yeah, it doesn't help the trucks on an unlevel piece of ground too and kind of jacked up funny. But uh, I'll just have to tail that back end up some right from the middle. And then when I add the other stuff, I'll uh, actually get some tape out and do it, which I could. I've got plenty of tape tape stuff off if i want to you know uh, straighten out sex it up it's probably what i should have done in the first place i just didn't want to i'd rather freehand the stuff i think that's a little bit cooler to say yeah i just did it by hand i just whipped it out looks like a two-year-old did it but that's okay i mean i like the design though i like that right here how that breaks that up so yeah i guess um i'll be back i don't know what all you can even see on the camera and where the reflection the fuck is reflecting oh it's the light that's the light off the cushman actually it's the windshield i think but uh, yeah there's a little bit of squiggle for you Woo! that was the first line too i didn't do too bad but yeah going down if i could get my um my hand steady and those brushes more steady i'd be okay but like coming around a curve it's a little bit hard you can see where the paint line is where it went in at so it's um it's not easy especially since my hand is like dragging on some of this stuff it's gripping and, and twitching and you can see all that crap in there you know uh, like that's a pretty good decent straight one i stopped right there and restarted and then always getting to these these things are a pain in the ass so i use the little detail brush on this i just wanted to get some establishment which i that's the only thing i'll have to do like that so but yeah i'll, I'll sex all that stuff up all this stuff can be sexed up so just because it's not perfect right now doesn't mean it won't look somewhat decent when i get done um for freehanding stuff for my first time it's not that bad uh i got no complaints like i can i can fix anything i fuck up pretty much except for um you know if i get too much pain on something like that was that's just a pain but yeah anything that i fuck up like i get too thick right here i can add other color to it um what happened was i started going up because i i was going this way and i couldn't see the line which 
then I turned and I started going this way and it was a little bit easier to do that top one because I could see that line when I was dragging it. So I gotta be conscious about that and which way I'm turned and this and that and you know, while they splat and all the rest. So I'll probably end up taking a break and gonna mix some more paint and then I'll do the back section on the bottom and then I'll start moving up towards the top and do whatever's the easiest, um, you know, the Cushman it'll be nice to have that up there because there's gonna be a black line that goes around there too. Basically outlining everything right now black and then we'll add the other colors later. So that's what's up. Well, all the black lines are established here that I wanted to do up there and up there all the way around the back. Uh, they're not the best, but that's okay because I've got a plan. What I plan to do is take some of that thin line tape and uh, tape the black section off that I want or tape around um, the outside of it to where I'm comfortable with putting the other stuff that way i can make it a little bit easier on myself because this is um this is too much and too hard for me to do uh with all this area free handing it and i want it to be somewhat presentable and decent besides you know what i'm saying the translucent paint and the muck ups there is fine the uh pinstriping i want it to be a little bit better so it's um extremely hard to drag that stuff to keep it flowing correctly and um i mean the paint's doing fine it's just after a while it dries up and it is a lot of um ground to cover so that's uh that's what i'm doing next i'm gonna i'm just gonna take some of that green tape we'll go inside and i'll show you what it is or um there's other stuff in here too that came in the kit but i'll probably just use that green stuff because that'll be fine it goes on it goes on all right and i've used it before it's the like the lime line it's the cheap stuff so I'll use um, probably this real thin stuff where I do have some stuff that's a little bit thicker. I'll have to see what um, the size is of the other stuff I've got and how much I actually have. Okay, so yeah, look, at, that's all I got. I got the thicker stuff and then I got the thinner stuff and I got three of the thick stuff and two of the thin stuff. So what I'll probably do is um, maybe do the thick stuff if my line's thick enough here. Yeah, it looks like my line's thick enough for that to put that on there and then I'll run it up straight through there and basically tape off the whole thing and then what I'll do is I'll go on the top and then on the bottom of it to where I want the other colors that way when I do paint them they'll be completely straight completely smooth uh, some places may get bigger than others because like that's a mucked up spot I did try to touch that up so it leveled out a little bit it's not as bad but it's still kind of uh kind of a little bit of an angle but well that's what it is man those didn't go too bad. Those are kind of hard to do uh, up there, standing on top of the Cushman, but it's better than a ladder. It was way better than the ladder the Cushman was. So, you know, that's done up there, that line up by the lights. And then those are done way up there. And that line goes all the way around to the back. So all the back lines are done. And I did kind of muck up around that opening section, but whatever, dude. You'll have that. Oh, that just cracked me open a bucky, so that's what's up. I'm going to get into this and um, bring it back after I do some more work in progress. Start working on these colors. This will be fun. It should be easy because I won't have to do any more black. Once I get all the tape down, I should just be able to bam, bam, let it dry, peel it off. And uh, everything else is good. I probably won't use this brush again. I'll probably get a smaller one out. So that is what is up.
Well, it's six o'clock, folks, and um, I'm going to shut it down. I got all the black and all the green on. Now, unfortunately, I had put that tape on, and then I decided I didn't need it because I had switched brushes. Because this brush flows a lot easier, and it's a little bit easier to control, so the lines wouldn't be so sloppy. They are somewhat crooked. So I had tape on there, and I took it off, and it peeled off a section here. This huge section here of uh, the metallic, man. So that just didn't want to stick to this paint. Um, even though I would sanded it down and stuff. And this doesn't have any clear on it. So that's exposed right there. But uh, yeah, man. That, that peeled off and that sucked. But other than that, I got green on all of the black on both sides. Now I just need to do some purple. And, um, and I'll be done. It's up there, and I could probably go back through the middle and use the black because the brush I was using was a little bit easier and better. Some spots are, you know what I mean, not as good as others, but at least it's all done. Like you can see that section up there where there's no black because I got super crazy when I was doing the black, so that'll have to be added back in. But basically, I can go back through and add a black line. Uh, I just wanted to try to get some of this stuff established with the green. Honestly, I don't mind the shit because it's kind of fucked up and, well, that's what kind of guy I am, so. But from the porch, you'd never know there was a problem. But up close, it is Frankenstein truck and it's kind of scary, so. I mean, other than that, that green laid on pretty well with that brush. I uh, peeled some of that shit off right here, too. And I was more pissed about that than I was anything with the pinstripe, so. Yeah, I guess it's just a tribute to old boy that hand painted the green on the uh, mucked up pinstripe. It's like Charlie Brown shit. You know what I mean? But yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Get some purple on there, some more stuff on there, and um, you'll never know. It'll just be a distraction from uh, all the other muck ups, if you know what I mean. It's like one big muck up. Yeah, that's okay though, because. It's my muck up and I like it, so that's what's up. It is the Frankenstein.